knowing that if you don't quickly go and do something, that brother may catch out. And so quickly, I see you writing a greeting card. And this greeting card, the way you will write it, You know what you write there? Something good is on your way. <laughs> and as the girl is getting those kind of cards, of course, you know, in writing that, you also do some little drawing that shows something and it does then you say dot 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 <laughs> did you get did you get my card you say yes i got it i hope you understood sha aha why are you doing that you are fretting and sisters how you also fret are you also fret? How you are wondering whether God has forgotten you and how unconsciously something is telling you that show your face. Show your face. You see, if you don't show your face, they won't know you are around. You also show your face. So, you know, that's that way. Bro, how are you? I just want to greet you. And you know how you carry those eyes. You, you make it look so tender. As as the brother is going, you look at him in a way, and when he looks like he said, <laughs> I just go to you. You know what we call eye contact. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As you are fretting, you make those arrange. It's all an arrangement. Sometimes an arrangement to fry some uh, some chicken and just to send it. The Bible says, "He who believes shall not make haste." God, the one. Who will make? Is that all right? What does he want you to do? Go and sleep. Go and rest. Stop fretting. Don't let the presence of other people make you feel that maybe you will miss your chance. If God is making a man for you, nobody can take him. Are you hearing me? I want to tell you, sister, if you have to compete with another girl over a brother, you will live the rest of your life in competition. Are you getting me? If you have to outdress another girl so that this brother can face you, oh, you have entered into a life of restlessness. Can I tell you, someone anywhere else will address you one day. And as soon as he sees that, and young sisters, listen to me. If any brother came to talk to you and say, well, you better consider yourself lucky that I'm even speaking to you. Because uh, you know, by the you know by the grace of God, 
by the reason of the anointing you know I'm not a miyama you know actually uh, I'm just trying to obey God because even Sister Cecilia Sister Deborah and uh, I, 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 I even think Bumi Solai herself uh, but well you are lucky Sister are you hearing me don't rejoice about that kind of man that man is a useless man never you jump at him bro. do you know why because he's coming in between peaks if you cling to such a man you will forever leave begging to please him I'm telling you something about how to be how to get the right person are you listening to me now don't fret one of the basic things that God will do for you is to bring you to a place of rest you see when you are rested you are in a good position of security your worth as a sister your worth as a brother only comes out when you are completely at rest if a brother came to propose to you and say well he doesn't make a mention to you but uh, he is still he is still really trying to sort some things out uh, because there are several other sisters that uh, uh, <laughs> don't take him serious don't even pray about it are you hearing me? he's an unsettled man don't let that occupy your heart do you know what I want you to say he said when God has finished dealing with you tell him like that say so don't bother me about unfinished products praise the Lord the second manifestation of a good slave trust the Lord is that all right what did i say you should do trust in the lord you see when you trust it means you are not only relaxed you also have implicit confidence in the ability of god to act god is acting god is working i know how god worked and he went and got sister shade for me you see I know how it works. God is working. But you see, sometimes, as He's working, you may not understand that God must first work on you before He can bring a woman to your life. And sisters, any man that God has not worked upon is not marriable. I will show you when God put him to sleep God did not start running up and down looking for a wife for him you know what God did first you know what God did first God wounded him and removed a rib from here even though I can see many young men wanting to propose what I'm looking for in their lives that I have not seen is their wound <coughs> I have not yet seen the broken part of their lives for which they are needing help their sisters a man that God has not worked upon has no space for you in his life so the first thing God does is to work on this man. Bring him to a position where he can see his weakness. 
and he can see a need in his life. I have not always seen a need for a woman. I always thought that, yes, we are the Pope for Jesus in those days. So if any sister came around, we looked and said, well, these are fire extinguishers. Who will try to kill your anointing? But when God began to deal with my own life and say, you have a need. That's the beginning of it. So, the first thing you should be looking for is God's delay on your life as a brother. Are you with me? Until God has dealt with you inside broken some certain things in your character in your life and began to show you that there is a need that needed to be filled you are not probably ready for marriage many many young men went into marriage when they have no need to marry I think maybe what they thought was their need was because their body moved and they say oh, I wish I have somebody I can have a relationship with now no marriage is deeper than somebody to sleep with praise the Lord it's for a purpose trust in the Lord and their sister like I'm saying don't rush to marry a man whom God has not dealt with and their brother, the rib that God took away from the man, the Bible said, made he unto a woman. Do you remember that? There are some sisters in the making. God hasn't finished quite with them. All. And I see some of you, you quickly went to the workshop. <laughs> Unfinished bones. <laughs> He said, make I have it, make I have it, I'm ready now. And there are some girls that you are seeing here now. Sincerely speaking, God is still working on them. And they will not be ready to fit into your life, to carry your body, until God had finished working their lives. And part of the places He may want to work on their lives, may be under their disciples. But unfortunately, you quickly pick them out. And before they were made, you have carried them away. You have carried unfinished products. You will suffer. Because some of the things, and you know the problem is that the marriage estate stops something there are many things that once you are married dear sister we can't do to you again I hope you know that as soon as you are married you are married and so so many unfinished issues you will now carry unfinished bones and you are going to the altar and God will say, when did we finish this woman that this boy is carrying him? He said, well, he said he couldn't wait again. So he has carried. While you are trusting the Lord, the next instruction says, do good. Now, you see, there are these quiet instructions that I thought you need to understand as basic before we start talking about whether it's a dream or whether I heard a voice or whether something which we will talk now you say do good you know the problem is that some of us once you started thinking of marriage the only thing you are doing now is marriage are you hearing me? you are now going the only thing 
as you came for this fellowship now. You know we are many here. Do you know we are many here? Somebody came here only for one purpose. Do you know the purpose? You are not telling me. It's just to catch a girl. So you see, whatever is happening is not seeing, is not hearing. Is only see again. As we are breaking out here, as we are going to eat, as we are coming to pray, as people are coming for altar call, it's just <laughs> Oh, oh hey Jacob. <laughs> is it <not>? is it <laughs> As we are going, his program mistakenly fell on the ground, and his sister was just being benevolent to pick it. He said, Oh God. <laughs> and she picked, and she picked the program for me. Ah! <laughs> and then he will lift up his voice and begin to do what? To weep. <laughs> What is the name of that brother? <laughs> I want you to know that knowing the will of God is deeper than such flimsy things. But you know those flimsy things become so big because you are preoccupied with it. You see, while God is active in preparing a woman for you, you get occupied with God. Do good. Keep living your life. Sister, are you hearing me? Keep living your life. Do what God wants you to do. Don't be preoccupied. If you do that, you will fall into a trap. Do good. Keep doing what is correct. Be occupied with righteousness. Be growing in the character and in the virtue of Christ. Do good. Don't be conditioned. Don't condition yourself. Otherwise, you will enter into some conditions. Are you getting me now? You see, it is God who is working. And when He finishes, it will come. That's how God does it. Be occupied in the plan and in the will of God for your life. Don't just sit idle. Keep busy with the will of God. Live in righteousness. Don't keep tampering with your life to destroy your emotions. Run away from every appearance of evil. You see, when I say do good, there are certain infatuation that overwhelms you immediately when you start thinking of a life partner. Eh? Sometimes, Unconsciously to you as a young lady. Just because you are thinking of life partner, you now go and carry your album. You are now opening and you are looking at the faces of brothers. And this other one that did like this <laughs> and was smiling. Was smiling. Then you now take that photograph, you now start looking at the contour of the face and say, hmm. <laughs> And sometimes you even take it to your mother. You are entering the problem with. Ah. 
the sisters are following me very strongly now. Are you following me at all? Aha. Uh -huh. Now you see, those things, let me tell you what it does. It conditions you. It puts you in a situation where you will not be able to know the will of God. Because a person that you studied his photograph so closely, when you sleep, whom are you likely to see in your dream? You will really see him. And then, as you are going to lecture, there are certain evil coincidences planned by the devil. As you are entering the lecture theater from this door, is also entering from that door. And something tells you this is how you will meet at the altar one of these days. Say, God, the Spirit just spoke clearly. As I was just entering from this side, and as he was entering from that side, and just, you know, it's like as if we are going to meet. Then suddenly, I remember that we are in the lecture theater. You are entering into trouble already. Now, those things hinder you from knowing the correct will of God because you are already conditioned. So the Bible says, do what? Do good. Occupy yourself with the will of God for your life. Be serving the Lord. Be doing your own work. You don't need to dress particularly to draw attention. Ah, you say, brother, what are you saying? That the brothers of nowadays... They don't look for spiritual things, so they also look for somebody who dress fine, 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 fine. Those who look for those outward externalities, they are not good for marriage. Do you know why? Clothes fade, and they tear. If the attraction to you is to your dress. When it fades, love in their heart will do what? Will fade out. But am I telling you to dress shabbily? No. I want you to be neat. I want you to be simple. I want you to be cute. You know what it means to be cute? Yes. You don't need makeup to be beautiful. Only those that are deficient need makeup. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The way God has made you Praise the Lord. The way God has made you, there is an intrinsic beauty in you. It's only that the devil and the world system sometimes don't allow you to appreciate that uniqueness that is bulging out of your life as you are growing. Delight yourself. That's the next point. Delight yourself also. In what? In the Lord. What does it mean to delight? Eh? Eh? Find pleasure in the Lord. Enjoy yourself in the Lord. Hey, you know these little, little things I'm talking about, they are the problems that underlie wrong choices. I want to tell you, any day as a young girl, listen to me, any day you begin to feel something tells you, eh? you are not even, you are not attracting, that's why nobody is uh, coming near you. If that thought 
comes into your mind for five minutes eh? and you begin to entertain it to the point that you no longer rejoice in the love of who you are let me tell you something do you know that the first man that comes around and say I love you you will fall do you know why it's because something has conditioned your mind as an unlovable person so when he comes to that flimsy man talk I love you something will tingle in your body I say yes 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 and then they will catch you cheap and those kind of words that are very very sensitive to girls those little words I love you I say, you see, he loves me. He loves me. He, say, he loves me. He loves me. And all of this love is not, you know, it's just that something in your mind has already defeated you as if you are less than what God wants. I want to tell you that you are lovable and that you are already loved. Do you know who loved you? The greatest lover. Greatest lover. There is no other love greater than this. That he should lay down his life for us. He loved me. So the first thing I want you to know is that you are not destitute of love. Delight yourself in the Lord. As a young girl, delight, rejoice in what God has made you. The reason is because you are wonderfully made and you are precious. And look, it's because the devil knows how precious you are. That's why he's chasing you about. I want you to remind yourself, I'm precious. Yes, yes. You are not just an ordinary person. God is doing something in your life. Now, delight yourself in the Lord. The feeling of inferiority that comes many times on girls makes them to fall a prey to the first careless, empty lover that comes around. It's a feeling. It's inside. Sometimes you don't tell people. You know, as a young girl, sometimes you go, you go in front of the mirror. Listen to me. And then, when you look at yourself, something may tell you that this your breast is too improportionate. And that's the devil. So, as you are going. The only thing that is ringing in your head is like every man you see. I say the only thing that they are seeing is your breast. So in your heart, you say, You know you didn't greet me. You went and up that time. You said, Girls, I don't know. It's all right. No. When you allow that in your heart, you are laying a foundation for a wrong choice. Sisters, am I speaking to you? I know I'm speaking to boys as well. They know. They know. But I want you to know very closely that as God has made you, when the correct man that is making your life to fit into comes what he sees about you are not those things he sees the bone of his bones he sees no one else that could fit in like yourself 
and that is the basis of your relationship nothing else find your pleasure in the Lord set your affection on the Lord and not first and foremost on a man or a girl enjoy the Lord be satisfied that Jesus is your friend will you be satisfied with that and as a young brother my friend I had a friend you see my friend we were on campus together and we used to pray together a lot my good friend so we ran into trouble one day there was this sister very good sister spiritual sister we thought and my brother was very quite, quite close you know they are talking of discipleship and all of that and they used to go to places to do Bible study with other students so we thought sister is fine so one day brother went to visit her and she was sitting on the bed and I think there was one chair here but her brother didn't understand so he sat on this other edge of the bed sister noted that she noted that and so so day brother came and sat on the edge of the bed then another time they visited and she was eating at my lunch. Ah, brother, come and eat. And he was hungry. So he washed his hand and was eating from that same plate with her. She noted the brother ate from the same plate with me. Then when her mother died, her mother died and, you know, wanting to write a, a, a letter of condolence and after writing in just to begin the letter I said dear sister in love and oneness with you at this kind of time and then at the end of the letter in love and oneness with you and he put his name signed three times <laughs> so one day there was a problem the sister went and reported the brother to a senior friend who is our common senior friend that look at so but that proposed to me three times and he is trying now to disappoint me but I say, when did I propose to you eh? when then she quoted these three incidents just like you are shouting that's how we all shout and say ah he said no and she was really offended why it's because something in her heart and it's a desperation that makes you feel as if it has to take something special for anybody to write like that brother there are so many lizards that are crawling <laughs> on the floor and we don't know which one is having the leg problem <laughs> are you hearing that now so dear brother don't be flimsy with your mouth is that all right don't say what you don't mean don't go about speaking words that tingle somebody's ear go and sleep Are you hearing me? Let God finish the work. This 
kind of thing that some young brothers are doing and they are keeping three sisters in suspense. They have not made clear proposal but they are still standing there saying there is something. Maybe there is something and you didn't uh, want us to know. Please, go and slay. Commit your way to the Lord and hand over the matter of your marriage to the Lord and allow Him to handle it. Don't be set in your way. We read that. Don't be set in your way. In order to discover the will of God in marriage, there are certain things that you must let God, when we say go and sleep, is part of it. Remove all those standards. I hope you understand the standards, the idols, the things you are dreaming about. I want, I want my, my wife, I want light complexion, not too slim, not too plumpy, I don't want water bottle. At least, at least, at least, I want a graduate. Brother, those standards, those things you set, they are the idols in your heart. Some set idols of the tribe. You must come from my village. Some others set idols in their heart of height. Eh? There are sisters that are saying, And I'll be going with my husband and I will be doing like this. And every time we are passing, I will look like his little sister. And they will say, hey, Is that your little girl? No. <clears throat> no. God, I know you know what I'm looking for. You will give me the desire of my heart. I want you to pray that God will help you to completely trust the Lord and not to lean on your own understanding. All those standards that are worldly standard, some of you also say standard that look even spiritual, spiritualized. But they are still standard all the same. They are idols. They don't allow God to show you the right person. I wish you can say to God, I know you know what is good for me. Whether from Sokoto or from Portacot, give me the one that places you. Sister, are you willing for that? <laughs> Did you see that now? Did you see that the boys are so few? It shows that there is something somewhere. Praise the Lord. Oh, time will not let me go on from here. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. I will sort it out. Don't worry. Don't worry. We will sort it out. God will help us as we are going. So, have you got all these things that we have talked about? They are first and foremost the preconditions, the prerequisites for God to lead you. They are prerequisites. They are things that we must first of all respond to 
so that the leading of the Holy Spirit can become very, very free and available to us. If there are standards in your heart, you need to drop it. Are you hearing me? If there are things you have listed quietly, maybe you read a book, maybe you saw a photograph, maybe uh, somebody spoke, and you got some of those standards quietly in your heart, and you have already unconsciously or maybe subconsciously committed your heart to them. And every time the Lord wanted to bring a brother, no! <laughs> I bind that in the name of Jesus. I bind it. I bind it. I bind it. Maybe that's the first thing that God must uproot. When God has not uprooted your idols, you are likely to fall into the trap of a wrong choice. Sisters, do you want to marry a career or you want to marry a man? Alright. So career must not be an idol in your heart. Whatever God has not set for you in heaven, they really, really don't matter in your development. So, in order to sleep, it is to allow God to handle the matter and trust Him. Don't set up standards and preferences before the Lord. Give Him chance to lead you. Release every anxiety and stop running elter and skelter, looking here and there. Finally, on that second, on first guideline, wait patiently for God to act. Stand still and do nothing until God has spoken and worked on you and on the brother or sister. Stop playing schemes. Praise the Lord. The next guidelines before we now go looking at some issues I want to jump one thing because when we come back and I'm having another space I will I will now deal with the, the way now but we need to know before we even start praying who is marriable it's not every man you see that is marriable It's not every woman you see that is marriable. And ever before we start praying and giving consideration to anybody, there are conditions that God will have us to look at. As a child of God, you cannot get joined together with just anybody. You will notice that I've jumped number two. Eh? I will take it when I'm looking at how to be led of the Holy Spirit. Because I really want to talk about how to know. Because some of us are praying and you are saying, Oh God, oh God, maybe as I'm praying, I will hear a voice saying, Sister Jade, Sister Jade, Jade, Jade. And some of you have been waiting to hear such wonderful voice that says Sister Jadi but unfortunately you have not heard that so how could we still know that this sister is in the will of God for me if I dream if I fall into a trance or if a man of God just stood up and said Cecilia is your wife would that be all right? We will come to look at that. But as great as that is, let's look at those that are not marriable. No, 
number one those that are not marriable first on the list of unmarriable man or woman is what unbelievers would someone read second corinthians 6 14 quickly for me don't be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua 23, 12 and 13. Who will read that for us? my God will you like this kind of thing that the woman you marry becomes the thorn in your flesh eh? prayers in your eyes until you perish out of the purpose of God eh? something you remember something did you remember what something did he plucked out his two eyes and offered it to his her countrymen for pepper soup. It was terrible. But you know when Samson was going down to the valley of Sorek to go and catch a woman, his mother said, ah, didn't you find a girl among the daughters of your people that you are going to this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, no, leave me alone. Marry her for me, for he does what? He suits me well. Don't let unbelievers suit you well. Are you hearing me? The unbeliever that is appearing to you as a suitor today, eh? When you get entangled in his life, he will become tons. When they describe how Delilah was dealing with something, I felt like crying. Eh? After he has shaved this man and made him naked, he now carried whip. He started beating him. He was beating him. And there are many wives that have brought down for the life and the ministry of their husbands because they are basically unbelievers so can we hear the bible now do not be what unequally yoked together with unbelievers an unbeliever listen to me he may dress well unbeliever may speak well unbeliever may do something good unbeliever may come around when you lack school fees and give you one Listen, I want to talk to girls now. Don't let them buy handsets for you. Some of you are beginning to collect handsets. Eh? You see a young man say, I have been trying to get you, but I couldn't get you. So that I can have access to you anytime I want. Take this handset. Don't worry about the card. I will be I will be sending you the card. You are entering into trouble. Eh? Yellow. yellow? Uh -huh. Be careful of this yellow. <laughs> be careful of yellow. Otherwise, you may be entering into difficulty. And as a young girl, so that the will of God for your life is not jeopardized. Don't make yourself a public property. We have entered into a new age. In our own time, there are no handsets, so nobody can text you. But now, and some others specialize in texting. They may 
and make it their daily ministry to text you every day. They will have programmed it by 6 a.m. as you are waking up. The first uh, text that you get, ping, 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 as you open it. Linda, dear, it's just to tell you that I'm thinking of you. <laughs> That's a person, have you? You don't know what you're doing. Before you kneel down to pray, Linda, dear, just to let you know that I'm thinking of you day and night. You know you are good. Don't collect answers from an unbeliever. Don't give your number to an unbeliever. Don't give them opportunity to chase you around. Huh? Even for careless brothers, don't allow any young man, even if he's a man in your fellowship, to be texting you per second, per second. Do you understand me? Do you know if to know the will of God, unbelievers are out of the question? An unbeliever may come with a great promise that he will repent. You hear me? He says, actually, he's been planning to repent. The only thing that has been injuring his repentance is that he does not have support. And that it is this marriage that is really the problem. In fact, see, he has bought the Bible in preparation for repentance. And he now has a very fat Bible. Can I tell you, even if he meets down there and then to repent with tears in your, in your presence, he is still not marryable. You don't marry a baby. Eh? You like that one? Gay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Unbeliever may come with passion. You know sometimes they can whip up sympathy. Don't marry an unbeliever because of sympathy. An unbeliever is a child of the devil. Except you want to have the devil as your father-in-law. This unbeliever man, because his father is a liar, Every basic unbeliever is a liar. When he says to you that there is no one else in his life, you can as well know that it's a lie. If it is true, he doesn't need to say it. Are you hearing me? When any brother comes around, even brother, and said, believe you me. You are the only rose of my life. You are the rising star of my garden. You have every reason to know that there is something wrong with his life. You are not a commodity for bargain. Sister, you are not for sale. Are you for sale? No. no. An unbeliever, 
even though he may appear gentle, good, religious, he is basically dangerous. A child of the devil will be controlled by him. And the devil is not a man you can appeal to to help you change your husband. You remember somebody had reminded us of Samson? What of Ahab? Do you know why Ahab became a terrible man? He went and married Jezebel. On equal yoke. One of the things I want you to listen to in the passage we read he said, you will not be able to drive them out again. My dear sisters, once you marry an unbeliever, he becomes your head. If he tells you not to come to fellowship, if you come to fellowship, you are disobedient. You are a rebel. Even God who is not a supporter of disobedience what will God do? He will send you home He said, go back to your husband He told you not to come here Why are you here? That's the problem If you want to pay your tithes and your unbeliever husband said, No! You are a woman under authority Your tithe is unacceptable God doesn't take it so you can imagine that to go and bind your life with a child of the devil is actually to waste all that God is doing in your life. Now, it's possible that someone is sitting here and your boyfriend is not a Christian. He promises to change. He says to you that you know since we have started you know it's two years now how can you break my heart? Do you want to disappoint me? Eh? Where is the love of God? I want to tell you a broken courtship is better than a broken marriage. No matter how long you have been courting with him, since you are not married, you are not married. If you break it now, you are not a divorcee. You get me? But if you wait until he went to settle things and he took you to the altar forever, you belong to him until death do you part. Are you contemplating marrying someone who's one leg here, one leg there? Stop it. Brother, some of you think that it is easier as a man to convert a wife. I wish I can call some of our brothers here to give you testimony. That the moment you marry a woman and you are finished, what did I say? You are finished. You are completely finished. You see, a pastor can preach. You've not asked me, why is it that pastors, many pastors, are not able? There are very few wives that learn directly from their husbands. Very few wives. Many wives will learn from a pastor outside. But when it is their husband saying the same thing, no! Hey, what are you talking? Some of you say it's insulting me. No, it's not insult. I'll tell you what it is. It is because she has seen you inside out. Insult in Yoruba language is not insult. They call it Arifi. <coughs> Do you know the meaning of Arifi? <laughs> I'll tell you now. Arifi means to see something. Fini, fini. 
<laughs> That's the meaning of Arifi now. Arifi means Arifi, Fini, Fini, to see something inside out, in total. You know, some of you are great preachers here because we have not seen you inside out. That's why some of you do, you are a mighty preacher in the fellowship. When you are preaching, your junior brother don't listen. Do you know why? He he knows what some of us don't know. So when you are preaching, is he not my brother? (laughs) When he finishes now, he come and say, when he lands on the band, he's grabbing everything. Now, friends, it is most difficult for a husband to be able to teach and convert a wife after they are married. When you see a husband whose wives have become, they are learning from them, is because God has been working. So when you marry an unbeliever, you are going to suffer. They are not, you can't drive them out. And in fact, what the Bible says that she will buy you over. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. Who knows who brought him down? Eh? It's a woman, the only Yoki. His first wife was uh, from Egypt. Who is planning to marry an Egyptian here? Eh? Don't go down to Egypt. Tell, tell somebody by your side, say, don't go down to Egypt. You go down to Egypt. Eh? <laughs> Are you hearing me? I want you to tell him for me again. Say, that Egyptian is not good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The second person that you should not consider for marriage, a divorcee. A divorcee is different from a widow or a widower. God may lead you to marry a widower or a widow in God's will. If it is in the will of God, there's nothing wrong about that. But a divorcee is someone who puts away his wife for whatever cause. And the wife is alive and he is alive. is a divorcee. Even if he's a pastor. What do I call his name? Eh? He's divorcee. Divorcee pastor. No matter the division he sees for you, God did not make you. Are you hearing me? To come and carry a divorcee. As long as you are alive and the man's wife is alive, you will be an offender. In fact, you will be committing adultery. Are you with me? So sister, brother, let's pray that God will lead you aright. Don't consider a divorcee. It's not in the will of God for you. There are some divorcees that are hearing me. They will hear this and they say, Bragula is wicked. Does it mean that none of us will marry again? Go and reconcile with your... And listen, if any divorcee approaches you as a sister, eh, don't give him attention. Don't let him keep coming to you. Don't go and be cooking for divorcee. Eh? If you know any man who is quarreling with his wife, that's not the time to go and cook for him. Sister, are you hearing me? You must never be a reason 
to break anybody's marriage. Even if the man has been your disciple, and you now discover that the last time you went, the wife is on one side, he's on one side. And instead of sending his wife, he said, uh, Sister PC, can you quickly go and get me roasted, uh, uh, roasted corn and a granite? Refuse such errands. Do you know why? As soon as you are going, the madam of the house said, eh? So this girl is trying to take my place. That's how it always is. Don't be involved with divorcee. Is that not clear enough? Uh -huh. If you invite me to come and uh, preach at your wedding to a divorcee, I will not come. Do you hear that now? Don't even try. I will not come. If I know any brother that wants to come, I will stop them. Is that all right? You know I'm talking to you. You are heir. See, God has great, great, great vision about what you will become tomorrow. You don't need to start with someone who has already destroyed his own life. You are going far. Don't go and marry a Jeku. Eh? You need brand new, brand new, brand new. Not Tokubo. <laughs> oh, do you want Tokubo now? No, no way. God is making something brand new for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Now, the third person that is not married is a backslider. Eh? I want you to look at Proverbs 14:14 14, 14, quickly, and uh, Proverbs 2:10 to 13. Proverbs 14:14 14, 14 says, "The backslider in heart," and that's where the matter is. Will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. There are backsliders where in heart. Listen, there are backsliders that are still in fellowship. My dear brother, my dear sister, there are backsliders, but they are still coming for fellowship. But there are backsliders where? In heart. And a backslider in heart, the Bible says, is filled with his own ways. Another scripture says, the way of a backslider is hard. Those that have turned back from the way of righteousness, they still have the language. Are you hearing me? As soon as he said, let's open the Bible, he still knows all the Bible passages, but he has backslidden. It's not marriable. Even if you started courtship with a brother, Eh? and two weeks to your marriage to your wedding you discover him to be a backslider what should you do with that wedding suspend it you say eh? suspend it and say Lord I thank you for a timely intervention backsliders in heart when they hook you they are taking you backward. And you know something about backsliding? I discovered it is more difficult to climb than to fall back. Have you noticed that? Something you spend five years to build up. How many days does it take to destroy it? <laughs> Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. If anybody is not standing well in the presence of God, he is not someone to consider for much. Don't accept used to, used to, used to. 
Do you understand the meaning of history? History. Don't marry a man's history. Are you hearing me? What did I say you should not marry? Don't marry a man's history. Don't marry an historical man. Marriage is for a current person. It is what he is now that matters, not what he used to be. Ah, he used to be. He used to be. Ah, he used to be a prayer warrior. But this time we met him. As you are praying, you are just praying for 30 minutes. And he is so impatient. Eh? You know there are brothers that when we are in fellowship like this, they look nice. But once you enter question with them, as you say, look, sister, all this prayer, prayer, prayer is too much. Now let us relax. When you need them to pray, you already suspect that you are going to pray for long before you can do anything. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for everything. We know that even before we speak, you have heard. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And then you still say, let's go, let's go. That's a backslider in heart. Don't consider backsliders for marriage. They are not marriable. A child of God from any tribe standing in the testimony of the Lord of, of the Word of God and who is excitedly following Jesus is a marriable candidate. Amen? He must be established in the faith and let him not be a novice. Whereas I'm not saying you should be an ancient of days before you marry him. You hear me? But let it not be that you repented yesterday. Who knows? Who knows? Are you hearing me? Somebody just repented yesterday. And next week he made a proposal to you. See now he's a Christian. He's a, he used to be a drunkard, but now he's a Christian. <laughs> Who knows? What are that things an RNG? Before you agree to consider any man for marriage, <coughs> let's have a testimony of his own personal work with the Lord. Has God removed his ribs? Do you know that before God brought the woman to Adam, Adam had been working with God for some time? Am I right? And God has been dealing with him. So it must not be a novice. It's not a recent convert. It's not someone who just converted from crusade to the altar. And my dear, I want to suggest to you, if you let God work for you, you won't run into any trouble at all. And God will help you. Marriage is for men and not for boys and girls. Eh? Can I say to you, don't, don't yet consider marriage when you are still just a boy who when there is any little problem you are still crying to your mother hey. he said but the thing is moving me the thing is moving me let it stop don't, don't be moved this is because marriage is a responsibility and it takes man and a woman to come together for that responsibility it must be weaned from parents and other relations so that he can take care of a family life praise the lord whereas wedding takes place in one day Marriage is a lifelong process. What brothers means that people 
will support your wedding. Do you know that? But once you finish from the wedding, from reception, what do you notice? You are left alone. You are left to face the music. You are on your own now. May the Lord help us. Now, let's pause it here for now. And we will seek time when we cannot take the specifics on hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and we will check it. And how to make proposal when we become sure. Praise the Lord. I know there are questions already. Yes, there are questions. Can I ask you to wait on your questions until we come back? That's good. Praise the Lord. Now, let's stand up as we pray together. Are you enjoying yourself here? Yeah? All right. Let's pray together now. I want you just to make two prayers. Just two prayers before we before we we break to go and eat. Just two prayers. Are you listening? We say that the choice of a life partner is the one that affects a man's destiny in an irretrievable way. I want you to say to God, Lord, I will not make a wrong choice. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I want to sleep. I want to trust you. I want to relax in your mighty hand. I don't want to be anxious. I want to wait on you for what you can do for me. Let's pray together. Lift up your heart and lift up your voice and speak to the Lord and say, Father, I'm not going to fall a victim that so many people are falling into. Because you know the end from the beginning. I leave my marriage in your hand. Can you leave that matter in his hand and let him begin to guide us? If there are idols and standards and ideas, can you lay it at the feet of the Savior this afternoon and say, Lord, I surrender this aspect of my life to you. I just yield this aspect of my life to you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we are waiting at your feet that this input you are bringing to our lives, you are going to guide our hearts and choose for us according to your divine purpose. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. Father, we want to commit